we are actually treating machines in the last class and we complete the study of machines and there was something else all right for today we deal with, we deal with the types of machines all right in the last one we did machine we said a machine is simply any device that allows a large load or force to be overcome by the application of a small force called effort that's how we define the machine we looked at um, some basic concepts of machine we looked at mechanical advantage uh, we looked at efficiency we looked at velocity ratio we said mechanical advantage simply what there the ratio of what load to effort that was how we defined mechanical advantage we looked at velocity ratio that's distance moved by effort toward them distance moved by load we looked at efficiency ratio of mechanical advantage to velocity ratio expressed as a percentage we solved some problems on that all right so let's continue from where we stopped um, last time out let's look at types of machines types of machines please number one types of machines number one Types of machine, number one, the inclined plane. Number one, the inclined plane. So what we want to do now is actually um, related to our last class. The difference is now this. In the last class we did machines in general, right? But in this class, look at types of machines. So when it comes to questions of machines in Java. There are two ways to set it. We'll tell you either a general machine, as in machines of a previous class, or they'll tell you a specific machine. We now say an inclined plane, is that what you have here. So it's still under machines, but the thing is this when it comes to things like inclined plane, the concept of calculating some parameters, especially velocity ratio changes, that's the whole concept. So look at how to calculate either mechanical advantage or velocity ratio for the different types of machines. Then bring it back to the previous class. These are past questions. Right. That's it. Alright. So, inclined plane. What an inclined plane? When you have, let's assume, let's assume you have a drum of oil on the ground. Right? You have a drum of oil on the ground and it's in lorry. Of course. Um, let's see, here is a ground level. Let's say this is a ground level. Let's say this is a ground level. Like this. Uh, this is where Q minus time, that's a ground level. When you have a drum of oil this way, have a drum of oil this way, this one whole drum of oil, they have a lorry. So let me do it, let me just do a skeletal skele skele sketch of what a lorry should look like. Um, this is something of this nature. And it has to be. Okay, something of this nature. Alright, something of this nature. Alright, so you have a lorry this way. Because the lorry has a truck. Um, don't need the truck here. Uh, how about this truck? Okay, fine. Let me put the lorry. Let me put the lorry this way. So I have this space as a truck. No, you, what of you, what of you, what of you, what of you. This, uh, the door, whatever, whatever. Alright, so, here's how the case is. Let's assume I have a tube of oil and then a lorry. Because this one is steel and it's very heavy. I want to lift this oil into this truck so that I can actually transport it. Of course, it makes no sense to say you want to carry this oil up. It doesn't make any sense. It's too heavy for you to try to carry it up. Right, so at this point now, how do you lift this oil into this truck? What do you do? Huh? Give me an idea. I've asked you to ask for my own chief. Let's say you have a little bit of oil like this, and like this man here. How many people will you call of your size if I carry this? Yeah? How many? Do you believe you mean that five of you cannot carry your own oil? Yeah. Good. Like, I just say you have five of you cannot carry this. So, how do you use this for this point? What do you do? Oh, you get a capilla, right? 
。哎，哎，哎，大家一点，大家一点，大家一点。所以这里 plan right， 这里 plan， 这里 plan this week。Um, sorry, I'm just so. Get it planned and keep it planned this week. All right. So when you get this plan here, the idea becomes very simple. Just simply push this oil down for it to be this week, and then roll it up a bit. Yes. When you roll it up, this man goes from here and into the truck. So you can actually roll this into the truck by the help of this thing here. So. So the concept is this now. Instead of spending much energy to lift this load up into this height, you can simply do what there, roll it, and it goes into this height. So this one's called over there an inclined plane, right? This one's called an inclined plane. So the idea of an inclined plane is that it helps you to lift heavy loads into what there, um, these stances. That's the idea of what an inclined plane. Take that one. The inclined plane is used to raise heavy loads. The inclined plane is used to raise heavy loads like drums of oil. The inclined plane is used to raise heavy loads like drums of oil. ETC up to a certain height. Like drums of oil, ETC up to a certain height. Up to a certain height. For an inclined plane, for an inclined plane, the velocity ratio VI is equal to for an inclined plane. The velocity ratio VR is equal to one all over sine theta. What's theta? Here is your theta. All right. So theta is simply the angle of inclination of the inclined plane to the horizontal. That's theta. All right. So when it comes to an inclined plane, when it comes to an inclined plane, so get your V, your velocity ratio because of that. One all over sine of what this angle. The angle of I said this is called the angle of inclination of the inclined plane to the horizontal. That's it. Please note this. For an inclined plane, for this zero, it's equal to one over what sine theta. That's number one. Second type of machine is called the spring jack. The second type of machine is called the screw jack. What's the difference between a screw and a nail? What's the difference? Hmm? What's the difference between a screw and a nail? What's the difference? Huh? Yeah. So for nail, I just have to hit it once, right? I'm hitting it once and it's going down straight. Is it not? For a screw, what you do there, you wind a bit, it's going down one step before, this is not one step and then one step, right? So that's like, so consider a screw this time, right? Take that bit. The screw can be considered, the screw can be considered as an, in, as an inclined plane, the screw can be considered as an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. The screw can be considered as an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. An inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder.
All right, so you have this. So here's your screw jack, um, diagrammatic representation of the screw jack. You can see the screw. You can see the pitch, right? What is called the thread? For the thread of the screw jack, what's the pitch? What's the pitch? A pitch is simply the distance between two successive thread. Uh, thread. Yes. Distance between two successive thread is called a pitch for a screw jack. And that's about it. Think of it. Paragraph, take down. For a screw, comma. For a screw, comma. The distance between. For a screw, comma. The distance between two successive screw threads. For a screw, comma. The distance between two successive screw threads. It's called a pitch. It's called a pitch. That is P I T C H. Distance between two successive screen track this way. It's called pitch. In bracket P. Full stop. Continue please. When a tummy bar, tummy this way. When a tummy bar moves once, when a tummy bar moves once, comma, the input force or effort, the input force or effort acts through a distance. Act through a distance equal to act through a distance equal to the circumference of the circle. The circumference of the circle of radius r. The circumference of the circle of radius r. Where R is, is known as the length of the tummy bar. Where R is called the length of the tummy bar. So then for the screw jack, the velocity ratio is equal to 2 pi r all over p for a screen chart the velocity ratio is equal to 2 pi times r what's it r is for the length of tummy bar all over what the pitch that's how calculate the velocity ratio for a screen chart all right record that Recall that. Recall that. If there is no frictional force, recall that. If there is no frictional force, mechanical advantage is equal to velocity ratio. Recall that. If there is no frictional force, then mechanical advantage is equal to Velocity ratio.
hands. Alright, so hands. Uh, mechanical advantage is now called the two pi arrow on our P, right? Please, this condition only occurs when there is no friction. If you say for for a frictionless uh, screw jack, find mechanical advantage. They give you lead of the coming back and the pitch, of course, becomes this one here. So please, people, please, when there is no friction, the mechanical advantage and Restoration has the same formula. That's about two. But three, third type of machine. Look at this. The wheel and axle. The wheel and axle. Alright, I think wheel and axle is actually used to lift. Uh, what do you call it? Lift um, water from well. It actually comes from a wheel and axle. If you, if you, uh, what, do you, what do you see some of things? When you have a deep well, then you check the system that is repeating, right? Where you can actually see a hook, you draw it. When you draw the hook, it starts rotating and then it brings out one from the other side there. Sorry, we don't have diagrams here. Yeah. Right, that's something like a wheel and axle, say step. Alright, take that bit. Take that bit. This machine is used to lift water from deep well. This machine is used to lift water from deep well. This machine is used to lift water from deep well. Full stop. For a wheel and axle system, for a wheel and axle system, velocity ratio is equal to ratio is equal to cap, um, capital R all over small r. Capital R all over small r. For a wind and arc system, velocity ratio is equal to capital R all over small r. Because so the capital R means wheel of the rings and small r means wheel of the axle. That's it. Number four is the pulley system. The pulley system. Pulleys. Pulleys are often used. Pulleys are often used in construction sites. Pulleys are often used in construction sites to raise or lower heavy loads. To raise or lower heavy loads. Pulleys are often used in con or at construction sites to raise or lower heavy loads. All right, full stop. Paragraph please. For a simple pulley system, for a simple pulley system, the velocity ratio is equal to the number of pulleys. For a simple pulley system, the velocity ratio is equal to the number of pulleys equal to the number of pulleys. Alright, so let's go to
All right, so let's consider two more um, types of simple machines for this of past question. All right, but before then, before the listen of it, observe something for all the machines we've considered so far, ranging from what do you call it? From the inclined plane to the screw jack, right? So which one again? To the wheel and axle. All of them, you only have to find the velocity ratio only. So what happens to mechanical advantage? Why is that all of them has only velocity ratio formula? Why not mechanical advantage? Who knows? A thousand naira if you know it. Get it correct. A thousand naira formula. Right now, right here. Who knows? Why is it velocity ratio? Why not mechanical advantage? Why not efficiency? If you're, here, if, you're, if you're not here in the last class, don't even think about it. You don't get it. If you're not here in the last class, you should see your notes. But you're not reading your notes. Alright, so why this ratio? Why the mechanical advantage? Here's the thing, please. If you check the notes in the last class, we said that mechanical advantage depends on what there is. It depends on what the friction in the part of what the machine. We said so. So mechanical advantage is affected by what? By friction. Why when it comes to velocity ratio? We said is what is not affected by what friction. So what affects friction? We said what the geometrical construct of the machine. That's what we said. So what affects the velocity of a machine or the velocity ratio of a machine is what the geometrical con uh, construct of a machine. Hence, you can't compare a slim inclined plane. It's just thin and long to a screw jack that has threads. You can't compare a screw jack that has threads or what. It will and acts as what circular. So all of the has were there, different geometry. By geometry, we were there, physical appearance. So since they have geometry, different geometry works now, we also have what there, different velocity ratio. That's the concept. So for all of the um, different types of machine we are doing, all of them has different velocity ratio. Why? Because they have what there, different geometrical construct. That's it again. All right. Let's do one more or two more machines please. Let's look at the pipe, the wedge. Let's look at the wedge. Wedge is not very familiar, but yet it exists. Uh, yeah? It's not very familiar, but yet it exists. Let me give you a simple idea of how a wedge works. So let's say I have it, I, I cut down a tree. I'm thinking of drawing it in, but then. I'll end up missing my ancestors. So let me let me just let me that 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 is the truth of drawing. Let me let me no, no, let me know. I'll just tell you, right? If you want to if you want to know about it, go online and see it. Right. So here's how it works, please. If you if you cut down a tree, right? If I cut down a tree and I have the tree just um, let's say part of the tree is already off. You know, you just have the um, the surface of the tree there like that. Let's imagine I want to saw or perhaps I want to use an axe. I want to divide the tree into two. By the time you, you, you start chopping the tree from the top, what do you observe? It's a divide a bit. Now, here's the thing now. Let's say I divided it halfway. Of course, it's a tree, a new felled tree. And the, the concept is now this. If I want that space between the tree there, right? If I, if I chop, let's say I use an axe now. I chop the tree this way. My axe is inside the tree, right? And it's a bit divided, is it not? Uh, okay, for so you. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm saying. So here's the root of the tree, like this. And I'm trying to chop this tree this way. Let's have divide this into three, four parts, like this. I'm chopping it this way here. By the time you place your axe here, what do you observe? This tree is divided into two. True? Yes. Take off this axe. What happens there now? It's a cover up again. Why? Because this is actually small. It's cover up again there. Let's imagine I want to pick up this axe, but I want a space to be here. What do you do now? I will simply put what's called a wedge. A wedge looks like this, something like this nature. So I'll have the tree this way, part of the tree this way, part of it this way here. So it will be a space where I'll apply something here to keep that space or that gap between the tree there. So the gap is not covered. This is not just covered there. A wedge. It's called a wedge. Right? Alright, by the way. Let's see what we have about wedge. Think of it. The wedge is a combination of two inclined planes. The wedge is 
a combination of two inclined planes. The wedge is a combination of two inclined planes. Full stop. It is used to separate bodies held together by large forces. It is used to separate bodies held together by large forces. By large forces. Alright. Note. 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 For a wedge. Note. For a wedge. The mechanical advantage Note that for a wedge, the mechanical advantage is equal to the slant height of the wedge all over the thickness of the wedge. Slant height of the wedge all over the thickness of the wedge. I think this should be a featureless case, possibly. Okay, that's your mechanical advantage. Alright, one last machine before we solve the problem. One last machine. We will form the sound from the cutter gear wheel. Let's do gear wheel. This is made up of gear wheel. This is made up of. Or should we treat? Let's see this way. This is often made up of two wheels. Of two wheels, often two third. Two wheels, often two third. Be in brackets. Often two third. Of different radar. Of Different radii connected by a belt of different radii, R E D I R, that's plural of radius. Different radii connected by a belt, connected by a belt, and rotating on different shafts, and rotating on different this is called a shaft or different shaft. Different shaft. Note. Note. For gear wheel, for gear wheel, the velocity ratio is equal to.
let's do a recap. Let's recap something. We talked about uh, six single machines. Please mention the first question here. The inclined plane, okay? For the inclined plane, what's the distribution? Let me, let's use this as um, VR. Okay. For inclined plane, what do you get there? What about what? Sign theta. Here's the first machine. What's the second one there? We have strip jam. This one there. 2 pi r all over p. R will be left of the back. P is the pitch. What's the other one there? Wheel and axle. For wheel and axle, what's my the there? Radius of what? The wheel, all of what? Radius of what? The axle. Okay. What's the first one there? Huh? Sorry? Pulley. Pulley. Say pulley. You see, you're sounding pull like pull. For pulley, what have there? Number of what? Of pulley. Number of pulley. What's five there? What is it? Okay, you mentioned there. That would be great. Where? For when? What do you get there? Huh? For the top of the name, you know this is What are you doing? Slant type of work. Did you say to the government? Did you say to the upgrade it? No. Sorry? Uh, yes. Okay. That was slant type of what? Where to be? Mechanical advantage you call the slant height of web on the word there. Thickness of what? So I'm calling this slant height of web all over. Thickness of what? Web. So let's just it. About six of what there? Yeah. 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 Wheel. What was our VR? Okay, so let's this is N driven. So which one should we use that small d? Small d, number of teeth of the driven wheel on the word there. Eh? Of what? There is capital T for driving. Alright, just to activate what we've said so far. Alright. So these are the six machines we just mentioned. We call these their velocity ratio. What have we told you? This is solving some problems. For the same computer thing that we were not here in the last class, let's record some things too. Also, record these ones. Also, record this one. Number one, we mentioned, uh, we mentioned some key facts about the machine. We call number one, we call it mechanical advantage, MA. We said mechanical advantage is equal to ratio of load to effort. We mentioned this. But we talk about velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by effort. We call that L all over. All over. We call small e there. Distance moved by effort, small e, all over. Distance moved by load, small m. I call this capital M all over, small m. Alright. Number three, we looked at. Uh, efficiency E set is equal to ratio of mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio times 100%. We mentioned some other things. We said that mechanical advantage is equal to work output. Sorry, efficiency, right? Efficiency equal to what there? Work output all over work input uh, times 100%. But let's look at that part. Let's just focus on this one here. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. The book can issue. Good please. 2019, question 1. 2019, jam 2019, question 1. The velocity ratio of an inclined plate is 
the velocity ratio of our inclined plane is The velocity ratio of an inclined plane is so here options A, B, C, D. Which of them? A. Ah. Which of them? A. Did someone say A? Can someone say A? Does someone actually mention A in this, in this class? Really? C, U, C answer. Which of them is correct? B. B. What is it B now? It's B. Now, what's not the difference? The difference between what we have here and this is that. For their own, they choose to take what? Theta as what? Q instead. This is the same thing. So instead, instead of using an angle theta, they chose to use what? Q. Same thing. So because of that, 1 over what? Sine Q. Let's imagine I never knew this one. Which one would I not take at all? Let's imagine I never knew this answer. Which one would I not take at all? Which one do you think I would not take at all? Huh? Let's, just, let's imagine I never knew the answer to this thing here. Which one will I not even take at all? Which one does not even make sense? Huh? No? No. D does not make sense. You can't have it one side Q. How can it Just like what saying 1 times y is equal to 1 y. How does it make sense? So it makes no sense. So you can't have it one side Q. No. If you say half side Q, you make because say half of the parameter, it's okay. But you can't have it one y. It makes no sense. You can't have it one side Q. What was one side Q? 1 times sin q is called the word there, and sin q. So you can take 1 side so d makes no sense at all. all right. So for the other side, what? It's b. All right. So that's by option. All right. Correct option. All right. Next up. Next up, please. The last question two. Question two. A screw jack, question two. A screw jack has a pitch of 0.5 cm. A screw jack has a pitch of 0.5 cm and a tummy bar of 20 cm. And a tummy bar of 20 cm. Full stop. The velocity ratio is the velocity ratio is is please give me your answer. Please. Let me ask you this. This is for a screw jack. What's your answer, please? You have just one twenty seconds. You have just one. Don't even write, sir. Look at the bottom. What's the answer? Don't write. Don't write. Don't write. Don't write. Look at the bottom. What's the answer? You should have gotten the answer, but then you don't like maths. What's the answer? What's the answer? When you say there are two parts in here, 45, 45, 45. 45. What's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? Huh? We we'll, would we'll address this part. We we'll address this part close to your job exam. And that's how to be very fast, right? If you ask me, job exam is easy. It's just you that cannot do simple arithmetic, right? Look at that stuff, please. I'm giving two things there. Eh? I'm giving two parameters there. Eh? What are what they do? What's the first you're giving there? Eh? I'm giving the pinch P. How many there? Eh? 0.5 cm. What next? Is it coming back or length of coming back? I'm giving length of coming back. That's how many? How many there? Eh? 20 cm. You have to find the same for what? 
uh, is P jack. So let's buy two jack. What's the vocal of VR there? So phi R over P. So VR is now equal to so phi R all over P in P value. This is now okay before that. I'm having P and R in C. Should I convert to meters? Yes or no? Am I convert to meters? Yes or no? This is speed, so am I convert to yes or no? No. Why no? Yes. 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 So the idea of converting units is because I want them to be what? Or the, the idea of converting parameters per se is because you want it to be what? The same unit. But well, in this case now, P is in CL, R is in CL, so there is no need for conversion. Hence, yes, let's work on this. It's now equal to give you 2 times pi times, what's R there? 20. So 20 on the one there. P, what's P there? 0 upon the bar. So it's now equal, this is what there? 40 pi all over 0 upon the bar. So what are you going to get now? 80 pi. How do you support that? 80 pi. How do you get 80 pi? Just call 40 divided by 0 upon the bar. Get 80. 80 times pi, this is what there? 80 pi. Yes, yeah, it's the correct option.